Warning, Gory Storytime is a horror movie review show with a 13-year-old host. So, if you are not amused by the idea of a child describing R-rated graphic scenes of violence and death, or do not want movies from the 70s, 80s, and 90s spoiled, this may not be the show for you. Parental guidance is suggested. Yeah, so guide your parents out of the room so we can have some fun. Welcome to Gory Story Time. I'm your host, Jason. And you're already talking quiet. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Speak I am. up. Joey said I am. Speak up. Yeah, I am. There we go. Okay. Holy crap. Two weeks in a row you got to do that. Yes. No, y- your grandfather was on my other show and he whispered through the whole thing too. It's like, you talking about? yeah, anyway. So, because <laughs> it is a little harder to see this picture just because it happens to be a dark picture. Yes. Would you like to tell people what movie we're going to review? The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And what you, in case you didn't hear that, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Speak up, boy. I am. No, now. you're not. Okay. Talk as the if Texas you were at Ch- home, because you're not that quiet at home. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. There we go. Okay. Would you like to uh, send it to preview so that we can get the show started here, boy? Bang. Bang. The most bizarre and brutal series of crimes in America. as real, just as close. Just as terrifying as being there. Even if one of them survives, what will be left? The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. After you stop screaming, you'll start talking about it. What happened was tr- Now, you had never seen this movie before we sat down to review it for the show, have you? No, I didn't. Um, and I saw it on demand and I said, it's the classic version too, not just the reboot. Because yeah. that's one of the problems with some of these movies is, you know, you'll find the reboot and not the because original. Because they have the same name. Yep. <laughs> and I said, oh, the 1974 version. We were watching it. And we did. Yes. <clears throat> um, well, before we get into describing the movie and telling the facts or whatever, let's give a shout out to our sponsors. Sponsors, our, our real sponsors. These are commercials for actual products that you can actually purchase in stores because this local TV show has that kind of power to have real sponsorships. Yes. And it does. if you believe that, you are the smartest person on the earth. Yeah, smartest. That's the word I was going to use. Anyway. Gory Story Time is brought to you by Sawyer Family Style Barbecue Sauce. Um, 
We put our blood, sweat, and tears into this tangy sauce. Well, not our blood, sweat, and tears, but there are some in there. And by... Gein's 100% Premium Meats. Whether you're looking for juicy ribs, second steaks, or fried skins, it's Gein's. And what would go better than Gein's Meats and Sawyer Family Style Barbecue Sauce? Ask for them by name. All right. I wonder if anyone's ever gone to a store based on one of the things we said and looked for any of these things. And if so, they should beat themselves about the face with a ball peen hammer because they're about that smart. This comment was not brought to you by the people at Fact TV. This is my own comment. Of, anyway. Yes. Um, would you like to give a basic synopsis of, <laughs> synopsis of the uh, movie? Yeah. A group of... A group of... Teen-ish agers? 20-ish agers? Teen... Early 20s? Yeah, I would guess. They never really say, but... No. Go in a van road trip style. To and go see their grandfather's gravesite. Or one, a couple of them's grandfather's gravesite. I didn't even catch that. Okay. okay. Well, they said it. Okay. And on the way, they pick up a hitchhiker... Who turns out to be Nuckin' Futz. Yes. I said that in a way that's arable. Yes. Um, so they, they, they kick him out of the van. Long. No, they then kick him out of the van. And then, um, basically, then they stop somewhere and ask for directions to a the place. Nearest... A couple, no, no, a couple of people in the van. Not only was it their grandfather's grave, which had been desecrated, by the way, if you remember, someone had tore down the. Oh. They destroyed the cemetery. Oh. And it didn't, you know, which ties back in later, if you remember all the bones and stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but they also wanted to find the guy in the wheelchair, Franklin, and his sister. Uh, it was their father's, their father owned the house because it was passed down from yeah. the grandfather that they wanted to go see. Yeah. And they were warned, you know, maybe you shouldn't go out there because maybe some folks out there don't want you there. So yeah. that's the basic premise. And then they run into a family of fine young cannibals, which was actually a band name. In the, never mind. Whatever. Um, so let's uh, get started with some behind the scenes information. You want to go first or me? Yeah. Me? Yeah. The human skeleton in the house at the end of the movie was a real human skeleton because it was cheaper to buy a real one from India than to purchase a plastic one in America. Wow. Ew. Yeah. Yikes. That's, eh? Uh, the house they used for the Sawyer family house was actually owned by a family that they rented it from. <coughs> and uh, when they were filming, the crew realized that there was a field of marijuana plant and they called the local sheriff because they didn't want the production to like be shut down shut down and he never came to look at it or anything so yes yeah, nothing so happened nothing at all which is ironic because my next fact according to John Larroquette who's known to be a comedian kind of actor he was in a show called Night Court Okay. Uh, he played a guy named Dan. He was really funny. But John Larroquette, uh, actually, he was also, was he in one of the airplane movies? I think he might have been one of the shaved head guys. I don't remember for sure. But anyway, not really the point. According to John Larroquette, his payment for doing the, t the narration at the beginning was one joint. So they called the cops on a field of marijuana, but paid this guy in a joint. Hmm. That happened. Your turn. Talk about hypocrites. Uh, no, hippie crits. Get it? Cause the, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, yeah. When it was released, people were so horrified, they walked out of sneak previews for it. Absolutely. Marilyn Burns, who played Sally, 
cut herself quite badly on the branches as she was running away from Leatherface. So a lot of the blood covering her at the end was mm-hmm. her real blood. Uh. Saved on the budget for fake blood, I guess? Yeah, 300 gallons. Wrong movie. Oh, it was yeah. last week's movie. Yeah. Or two weeks ago, because we air every other last week. Last episode. Um, during the dinner scene, when Leatherface cuts Sally's finger, he actually does because he couldn't. They couldn't get the fake blood to come out of the tube behind the blade. You, you started Yikes. going quieter and quieter. But yes, so this girl went through quite a lot, and it sounds like what bleeding yeah, on set. It sounds like what they said was we can't get the fake blood to work, and she was a trooper and just said, "Go cut ahead, me. cut me," which is strange. Director Toby Hooper claims he got the idea for the film while standing in a hardware section of a crowded store and trying to think of a way to get through the crowd when he spotted the chainsaws. And he was like, hmm, this would get me through the crowd pretty quickly. (laughs) He claims that's how he came up with the idea. That's funny. Um, Toby Hooper let Gunnar Hansen develop Leatherface as he saw fit. Hansen decided design yeah decided Leatherface was mentally retarded and couldn't talk properly. Um, mentally retarded, I believe the correct term is little person. Anyway, what were you saying? <laughs> that was meant to be a joke. Yes, Hansen decided Leatherface was a little person and <laughs> no, come on, was mentally retarded and couldn't talk properly. So he went to a school for the mentally mentally challenged and watched how they moved and listened to how they talked. All right. Um, Since the film's release, the house used in the movie has been moved to, and this is the actual address, (coughs) 1010 King Street in Kingsland, Texas. It is now fully restored and it is called the Junction House Restaurant. So you can go eat in a restaurant that is the house of the Texas from Chainsaw the Massacre. original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Where That's the awesome. house had been in that big field, they wiped away any remnants of a house to the point where it just looks like an empty field that you wouldn't know there was ever a house. Really? Yes. I should have found a picture and sent it on ahead so we could show people, but oh well. Okay. Um, I did all this research. I think that's good yeah, enough. Entertainment Weekly magazine voted this the second scariest movie uh, right behind The Exorcist. The Exorcist, which we have to <coughs> watch and review for this show. Yep. Um, the This film's original distributed... Okay, this is a longer one, but this is pretty interesting. The original distributor was Bryanston... Bryanston Distribution Company. It was a mafia front for Louis Butchie Pereno, who used the movie to launder profits from a porn movie called Deep Throat and only gave the production enough money to pay back the investors, pay the cast and crew each $405. So everyone involved in the movie only made $405. He took the rest of it. At the time, it was illegal to make adult films, so he used this as a way to cover up how much profit he made from filming the uh, movie Deep Throat. Then, when he was arrested and charged with obscenity charges for Deep Throat, the cast and crew sued and were awarded $25,000 each. But since he was in jail, he did not pay that. It was paid by New Line Cinema when they bought the rights to the movie. Wow. Lots of information in that. But yes, this was distributed by a guy in the mafia that was using his company as a front to launder money from porn. Porn. And people were originally paid $405 each, the whole cast and crew. $405 to be in a movie. That's ridiculous. Well, we get paid absolutely nothing to do a show every other week. We're still here. We like doing it. Yeah. And then I do another show every week, and I'm starting a third show. Yeah, but is this a nationwide TV show? No. Or was that a nationwide movie? But I do upload episodes sometimes on my YouTube, and people nationwide could see them. 
could. Yeah. Well, there's websites that I've shared the link with that have been willing to post it and stuff. Banned websites that I'm a fan of. Yeah. And, but anyway. Um, even in his boots, Gunnar Hansen could outrun Marilyn Burns, so he had to do random things to make it so he wouldn't catch her at the end. And you probably noticed that. I noticed it, too, when he was yeah, chasing her. Yeah, he'd just, like, he stop next to a tree, and he'd be like, Bleh. Yeah, and start cutting the branches, and, and he was running zigzag. It's like, you don't have to run serpentine when you're chasing someone. Like, that's how you avoid being shot from someone, like, far away. You run like this so that they don't hit you. But when you're chasing someone with a chainsaw, you can pretty much go straight. Yeah. Speaking of straight, you did notice the girly wig that he was wearing with his leather face. As bad as that is. And the lipstick. Is. Yes. Yes. But I think that had to do with the, the fact that it, part. Yeah, Ed Gein. Which we'll get to. Yeah, okay. Um, the meat <laughs> hook scene. The what? The meat hook scene, which oh. they hinted at in the trailer. Um, it was done by holding the character Pam up by nylon cord that was wrapped between her legs. They were worried that it was going to hurt her. And she said afterwards, she said it really wasn't that uncomfortable at all. Now, if it was a guy, he'd probably have, you know, got one of the twins squished and been all upset. That's why he was laying on the table already. Right. Yeah. Anyway. Um, the close-up of Leatherface cutting his leg on the chainsaw was the last shot film, filmed. Gunner was wearing a metal plate over his leg that was covered with a piece of meat and a blood bag. Some urban legends say the movie took place in Poth, which is a small town 36 miles from San Antonio. This is false because it is completely fiction, but loosely based on Ed Gein, who's from Wisconsin. I've told you this story before, but I'll share it here. I had a boss from Texas who was like, no, no, I know someone who worked for the police department that arrested the Sawyer family. I know that this really happened because it's, the movie starts with saying these are actual events from blah, blah, blah. And if you listen to the date that they say, they say it was actual events from like two weeks after they were done filming. So they were actual events that hadn't happened yet? Yes. Apparently. Anyway. Um... The original title was Leatherface. Leather. <coughs> now, one word in front of the other. <laughs> the original title was Leatherface. It was changed to Head Cheese. Which makes sense with some of the plot in the movie. Yes. The crazy hitchhiker asked the guy in the wheelchair if he likes Head Cheese, and he said yes, and then one of the girls got disgusted when she found out what it was, etc. So Head Cheese would have made sense, but probably not the best title for a scary movie. It's like, head do you want to go see Head Cheese? Not so much. <laughs> Texas Chainsaw Massacre, now that's a title. Yes. Leatherface would have worked too, but continue. Yes. Um, and sorry. finally, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Eventually, part three was called Leatherface. Yes. It was technically Leatherface, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. Um, this movie was shot in chronological order. That is an extremely rare thing. For the most part, movies are shot out of order. Yeah. Um, that's why they have to have people on the sets at all times trying to make sure, oh, his beard stubble was this long or... Her makeup got messed up in this scene that we haven't filmed yet, so we have to make sure that the makeup being messed up matches here and there. Or, you know, there's blood on his shirt. We have to make sure that as the movie gets longer, the blood stain gets bigger, not smaller, or back and forth. Or, you know, things that people notice. This movie was filmed in order of what you see on the screen, which made it a lot easier to keep things in order. You know. Then what about when he was when he cut his leg on the chainsaw? It was the last thing they filmed. Right, it was the last thing they filmed. It was at the end of the movie. Oh. But I didn't the next see thing that. you see is her getting in that truck and driving the hell away in credits. I didn't see him cut his leg. The chainsaw falls on his leg and goes. Oh. Yes, you did. Okay. Wow. That happened. This is a movie being reviewed by someone who apparently hasn't watched it. Well, didn't understand uh, it. Uh, but, uh, I, you didn't understand that you saw a chainsaw land on his leg and cut into his flesh? No. 
Because I didn't see it. What is there to... Uh, well, you did try to keep falling asleep, and I had to keep saying, Jason, wake up. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Your turn. Um, countries with issues... Countries with, with issues. issues. Yeah. British censors... Do you want me to read that one? Because there's a lot of information there. And a lot of words. And you can read my number 10, I guess. Um, there's a lot of countries that had issues with this movie. British censors banned it in 1975 and, not, and did not allow it until 1999, almost 25 years later, to be released in Britain. Um, also, in West Germany, back when there was an East and West Germany, it was banned in 1982 and put on a list of youth-endangering media. All copies were confiscated. Finally, the ban was lifted in December 2011. They've had the movie out for like four years and six months. Oh, wow. Yeah, 2011. You were 10 when people in Germany finally got to see this movie from 1974. Wow. Um, and then they rated it not for under 18. Uh, it was banned in Finland for 25 years, and Australia banned it at least until the 1980s. So wow. some countries were not fans of this movie. They tried to do special edits and special cuts, and it was considered too harsh, even edited down for these countries. Wow. Countries are wimps. Okay. And some of these countries allow naked boobs and swearing on television like in england after a certain time like it could be sexual content and stuff and uncensored yeah, yeah. but you know that happened uh only one person is killed by a chainsaw and the only time you s see a chainsaw out cut so, oh cut someone it's leatherface himself when he cuts his leg um this movie was filmed in four weeks. Four weeks. It was supposed to be two. They went over time. And you can read how many deaths there are because we try to point out that as much as these yeah. movies catch so much flack. Five deaths. Five total deaths. Which, you know, five More deaths in 90 minutes is, you know. But there are so many movies that are considered geared towards families that. And this is a family movie. Deaths. The Sawyer family is a family. Yeah. Yeah. Gee. Um. Anyway, I, I uh, had a family. Well, yeah, that he killed his mom and had her up in his attic, which is why they also based Psycho on him, and he wore people's skin on his fit body as a suit, which is why the woman Buffalo face. Bill, well, Buffalo Bill from Silence of the Lambs was also inspired by him. He was also considered to be a cannibal who dug up graves and stuff. So there was a lot of different characters that were based on him. A little bit of... Uh, that dug up graves, which makes sense why all the bones were there. Right. And that the... and, yes. Okay. It, that was in the movie, Jay. Yes, I know now. All right, so what would you say your favorite scene was? My favorite scene would have to be the scene where the, the like crazy guy in the beginning... Okay was playing with his knife and slices the guy's hand open or whatever. Oh, I, the other not when he hand. sliced his own hand? No, when he slices the other guy. And then just jumps out of the van like he did nothing. And then says, oh, I'll get you for this. Like, <laughs> That was your favorite scene? Yeah. Just because, The thing is, it's such a creepy thing because crazy people could behave this way. Like, nothing happens in this movie that couldn't, couldn't actually really happen. happen. Yeah, right. and that's freaky. My favorite scene, I would have to say, would be the meat hook scene because I had never seen anything like that before when I first saw this movie. When I saw him lift the girl up and just set her on a meat hook hanging, I was like, that is Which one came bleeping out first? crazy. The Santa Claus creepy hmm. movie. That was until the 80s. Okay, because he did that, that same thing yeah, with the reindeer. I, I know, but so this, was, know. this was first. Okay. Um, what was your least favorite scene? My least favorite scene would have to be the fact that at the end, when he was chasing the girl, he kept doing all the zigzags and stopping and cutting branches. And, and it stuff. was obvious that he was trying not to catch her. Right, because I wanted her to be dead in the movie. Well, that's because you're a horrible, horrible person. 
yeah, Mr. Oh, Cujo was horrible because the kid didn't die. Well, in the book, he did. You can't base it on a book and then be like, happy ending. It's a Stephen King book. Let's have a happy ending. It's like, by definition, Stephen King book, not happy ending. <laughs> um, my least favorite scene, I would have to say, would be the grandfather when they tried to have him like sledgehammer the girl's head to kill her because it looked so hokey. And, you know, he's supposed to be so old that he's just like, and he kept dropping it. It just it annoyed me. I'm like, okay, A, he would either be able to actually do it, or if he's really that old, they wouldn't expect him to do it. It wouldn't be he's that old, can't do it, and they expect him to. That just doesn't... No. That's the one thing where I'm like, eh, it could happen, but it doesn't make a lot of flipping sense. Yeah. Anyway, um, out of a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate this movie? An 8. An 8. Yes. Why not higher? Why not lower? Not lower because it was an awesome movie. I loved it. Not higher because it was a family instead of one guy. Well, it, it wasn't supposed to be the true story of Ed Gein. It never yes, was. Yes, I know. They just He was inspired by that. And apparently chainsaws in a hardware store when he to wanted to him get through a crowd. Yeah. Now, I forgot to mention this. It wasn't put down on here, but the song... Whoa! Well. And for the rest of the show, Chucky won't be here. Yeah, except now my coffee that he knocked over is dripping on his head. Could you not really be able to do anything, I guess? I don't know. Jesus. Um, the point is... Yes, I see. Yeah. Uh, the song Maniac, which was for... Dancing. Uh, what was the movie called, though? Uh, sorry about that. No worries. That's all right. Um, Chucky likes to fall over a lot. Anyone that watches this show on a regular basis knows this. Um, but the song Maniac, uh, which was for... I can't think of the darn movie name. Yeah, because now all I can think like is this. Flash Dance. Okay. There was a song, you know, she's a maniac, maniac. Well, that song was actually written as a joke about Leatherface at the end of this movie when he was dancing around it looked like holding the chainsaw going after she left like he's like flipping out and it almost looks like he's dancing in a circle with it the guy wrote that and had it at the end of a tape he forgot it was on when he mailed in some other submissions for that soundtrack and someone heard it and goes well what about the maniac song he goes listen to the lyrics and it was like horrible lyrics about a guy slaughtering people so they said, well, just change up the verses and leave that chorus and have it be a good dance song. So uh, that song, Maniac, was actually written about Leatherface originally. Do they still have the original out there? That oh, no, he, it was never released. Uh, but um, I would say I have to rate this movie still, huh? Yeah. Um, I'm going to give it a nine just for the fact that there's nothing in it that couldn't happen. Right. And, you know, I love my Freddy. I love my Jason. I love my, you know, Michael demons Myers. that keep coming back and don't die. But the fact that there's nothing on this in this film that couldn't happen makes it have an extra creepy factor. Yeah. There's no supernatural anything. It's just crazy people that are cannibals Doing and crazy. Doing crazy things. Absolutely. Um, so I guess... That's all I had to say. Would you have any last comments? Um, we have. Oh yes, yes. I. That's true. Um, we have a email address, which is GoryStoryTime at yahoo.com. Um, any suggestions for movies to watch? Any uh, complaints? Complaints, comments. You know, we would love to hear from you. We also want to thank Final Cut right here in Bells yeah. Falls. Um, there are still some video stores out there. Not many. Not but many, but he does have there a nice selection, here. new and old. And for the old releases, you get to scroll through an iPad to, you know, buy section of, you know, if you want a comedy or whatever. So, or horror in this case. Yeah. Um, so please go ahead and, uh, you know, let them know you heard that you, you could rent from them yeah. right here on the show. Let them know that, you know, us mentioning it is why you went in. Um, also, fact8.com is the website for the TV station where episodes of this and other shows are posted. Um, and 
like Fact TV on Facebook. Just look up Fact TV, and they post episodes of stuff there too. Yeah. So uh, I guess until next time. I'm Jason. And I'm Craig. And, and sweet, sweet dreams. dreams.